Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Jakari Jackson. It's September 9th, 2014. Let's get straight into our news tonight. The image of the military contractor has largely been tarnished by the actions of Blackwater in 2007 when they opened fire on civilians in Baghdad, killing 17. But that hasn't stopped the military industrial complex from continuing to make money. Obama's ISIS war, profit for military contractors. Earlier this week, Stars and Stripes, the Pentagon run newspaper and website, posted an article calling for contractors to fight ISIS and provide other services in Iraq. The U.S. Army Contracting Command posted a notice last month seeking contractors willing to work an initial 12 month contract who should be cognizant of the goals of reducing tensions between Arabs and Kurds and Sunnis and Shiites. The Pentagon has converted Iraq with its violent sectarian rivalries into a lucrative business opportunity for a burgeoning mercenary and contractor industry that has blossomed in the wake of September 11, 2001. But lucky for these military contractors, they can simply change their name and get back into the game because the military industrial complex is booming. And speaking of something that goes boom, Obama's reputation. Spokesman for Sotlaw family blast Obama, White House using murdered journalists as pawns. Appearing on CNN Monday, a spokesman for the family of murdered U.S. journalist Stephen Sotloff slammed the Obama administration, declaring that both Sotloff and his compatriot journalist James Foley were used and still are being used by the White House to further its agenda in Syria. And here's what this representative had to say. They've said that their families have been consistently and regularly informed. That is not true. I speak now for, only from the Sotlaw family. I can't speak for the other families. They said that these hostages were moved uh, frequently. We know that for most of the beginning of this part of this year, they were stationary. Uh, we know that the intelligence community and the White House are enmeshed in a larger game of bureaucratic infighting, and Jim and Steve are pawns in that game, and that's not fair. And if there continues to be leaks, the Sotlaw family will have to speak out to set the record straight. Report. China moves 12,000 troops to Russian border. The report cites the Russian FSB border service as saying that Beijing began dispatching troops to the border on September 6th, with 12,000 to 15,000 soldiers making the trip backed by heavy artillery. It remains to be seen whether the reported Chinese troop movements are related to large-scale Russian nuclear drills set to take place on the Chinese border later this month. Russia and China have been forging closer links in recent weeks and months with the two superpowers recently signing a $400 billion deal for Gazprom to supply gas from Russia to China. Last week, NATO also approved a rapid response force of 3,500 troops that would be situated at bases in Poland, Romania, and the Baltic states, in a move that was widely seen as a further aggressive escalation aimed at Moscow. Now, when I talk about these stories about Russia or China, I always have to put the disclaimer on there. I'm not rooting for Russia or for China. I'm just saying that when you send NATO troops in there, and it's going to cause a, a situation of sorts, just like if anybody tried to bring troops here to the United States, you know, people would be alarmed about that and mobilize their own troops as well. But it's not so much the troops over there, it's the police state at home that has me the most concerned. New police compliance weapon blinds its targets. Shield Defense Systems, LLC, a company based in Reno, Nevada, is currently developing the Zero Retinal Obfuscation Gun. According to the firm's website, the weapon obstructs a target's vision temporarily for 10 to 15 minutes. Now, this is another step in non-lethal compliance or, quote, non-lethal compliance, because whether it's tasers or pepper spray or noise cannons like we ex experienced in Ferguson, Missouri, these things can be really harmful to people. Let's take, for example, uh, pepper spray. So let's say you come in contact, you're the police officer, you come in contact with somebody who has uh, asthma and you hit them with the pepper spray or the tear gas. This could have very serious, if not lethal, effects on this person, even though it's touted as being a non-lethal deterrent. Same thing with tasers. We've seen uh, reports of people being tased for non-compliance. We've even seen people tased for having a seizure. Now, understand what I'm saying. I'm not saying that the person got tased and then had a seizure. No, they had a seizure to begin with and then got tased for non-compliance. Another situation that happened here in Austin, right outside the city of Austin in Bastrop, a young man broke up a fight and then got tased for his efforts, fell down, busted his head open, now has permanent brain damage. They didn't kill him, so I guess it was non-lethal compliance, but yes, this had a serious health effects on this young man, and they need to have the proper training for all these armaments, from pepper spray to nightsticks to tasers to whatever else, to make sure these things do not have a uh, permanent lasting uh, impact or damage on the people that they're used against. And something that's damaging the Second Amendment, Facebook bans gun owners, allows kitten torture video. Recently, a video was posted on Facebook showing two men lighting a helpless kitten in a bucket on fire. 
But after multiple users flagged the video, Facebook told them it doesn't violate our community standards. A few days ago, a gun rights activist, Jerry Emery, was banned from Facebook after sharing an article explaining the ways in which Connecticut's gun ban is worse than Hitler's gun ban. Facebook said Emery's post, which included an image stating that gun control helped make the Holocaust possible, doesn't follow Facebook community standards. And it's nothing new about Facebook. We all know their, you know, censorship, selective enforcement, and all that jazz. And yes, it is their site. They can do what they want, but they promote it as a public commons. They often censor our videos here at InfoWars. You know, we have some, you know, I guess more sensational videos like Joe Biggs crossing the border with a dummy severed head, and they ban that video. But we also have videos that are very tame that Facebook says, no, we don't want anything to do with that. So, you know, it's Facebook. You know, they do what they want to do. I try not to uh, be too engaged in it. I do have a Facebook account that I rarely use. To me, Facebook's just pretty much a big Rolodex at this point. If I haven't talked to somebody in a couple years, I may go ask for the phone number and give them a call. But that's about it, my extent of activity on Facebook. Because I always try to keep my uh, online activities, you know, to a minimum. You know, I don't like having this uh, digital fingerprint, so to speak. And now you can get around this thing because now you have the technology to block things like Google Glass and also drones from using your Wi-Fi apparatus. And this is a technology brought to you by Cyborg Unplug. It's billed as a wireless anti-surveillance system. Unplug is essentially a portable router that can detect drones, surveillance cameras, and mobile tech like Google Glass trying to access your Wi-Fi signal and then boot them off of it. Which is great because you may have a coffee house or some other establishment that has Wi-Fi capabilities and you say, hey, I don't want all these glass holes in here. So they try to connect with the Google Glass and then you kick them off of it. And now something that just, you know, kicked me into a, I guess a tizzy, so to speak, uh, made me kind of laugh and think about the state of our country. Apple Pay, you can give the finger to Apple now. Users can make purchases with a simple touch of a finger. Because you remember with the last iPhone, they got you used to the, the notion of using your fingerprint to unlock the phone. Now they're saying you can pay with, uh, with a touch of a finger. The new feature allows special tokens to be used for purchases after a credit card has been securely added to the phone. According to Apple, actual credit card numbers are not stored on the device itself. Now, we're in a world, just recently, we've seen uh, the big celebrity hacking scandal. We've seen uh, other things happen with these phones and these technologies as well. Uh, last week, I talked to a gentleman, a security expert with cell phones, and he was telling me that something that we already know here at InfoWars, but he just reiterated, that people can listen to your cell phone conversations in real time. And I say, sir, what you just told me, most people consider to be a conspiracy theory. He said, oh, no, this, this is not a, a, con, a theory, conspiracy, or otherwise. This is real, factual information. He said, with the proper technology, I can listen to your conversations in real time. With the proper technology, they can hack into the uh, iCloud and steal all your personal data and information. So you got to be careful when you use any of these things. But if you're going to get online and you have to do it, I suggest you go to prisonplanet.tv and get yourself a 15-day free trial. You can get the Alex Jones Show, the nightly news, the special reports, the rants, and so much more at prisonplanet.tv. Now stay tuned because after this break, we'll have a special report from John Bound detailing new information on the Ebola outbreak. And I'll have a new report detailing things that are too Napoleon Dynamite for even the real world. And finally, one of our producers, Buckley Hammond, has new reports about surveillance technologies and statues. Stay tuned. This is the InfoWars Nightly News. The World Health Organization, the very same organization that wants to impose a global consumer tax on everything from internet use to your bank account to raise money for its drug research in the developing world, is reporting total Ebola-fueled chaos in West Africa. Scientists have discovered that this new unique strain of Ebola may have originated during a funeral for a traditional healer in Sierra Leone, where two strains of Ebola may have coincided. Further research has traced the disease down to a two-year-old boy that contracted the virus from a wild animal. The pandemic is ravaging Liberia the hardest, where entire families are packing themselves into taxis in a futile attempt to find Ebola care. The Ebola-laden taxis will only add fuel to the fire as they are not disinfected and beds are in short supply to treat this contagion. Nearly 40% of new cases have occurred in the past three weeks. According to the World Health Organization, 3,600 have been infected with Ebola, 2,000 have died, and upwards of 20,000 will become victims of the outbreak before it's all over. But those numbers have been disputed by locals in West Africa for months. 
Last month, Dr. Gottlieb, former director of medical policy development for the Food and Drug Administration, asserted that Ebola is likely to arrive in the U.S., and that if it does, the CDC will invoke powers to hold a healthy person against their will. Dr. Gottlieb also points at an executive order passed by Obama on July 31st, which allows for the detention of Americans who merely display signs of any respiratory illness. We are already seeing a widespread respiratory mystery illness among children in the United States. It's only a matter of time. John Bound for Infowars.com. Have you talked to the school nurse? No, she doesn't know anything. Will you just come get me? No. Well, will you do me a favor then? What? Can you bring me my chapstick? No, Napoleon. But my lips hurt real bad. Just borrow some from the school nurse. I know she has like five sticks in her drawer. I'm not gonna use hers, you sicko. See ya. Ugh. Idiot. As bizarre as that scene was, a similar event has now actually taken place. In Virginia, an 11-year-old was told that she couldn't have chapstick without a doctor's note. And even if she did produce the prescription, the nurse would have to apply it for her. It seems that zero tolerance also applies to common sense. And let us not forget the case of the infamous Pop-Tart gun, where a boy in Maryland was suspended after eating his pastry the wrong way. A school staffer claims that the boy used the gun to imitate a gun sound. And so what if he did? But there is hope though. Sixth graders in Arkansas were given the task of deciding which of our God-given rights the government should allow us to have. So if I lose my right to bear arms, hopefully I'll gain my right to bear lip balm. You can find more reports at InfoWars.com. Chicago, the quintessential American city, renowned for its innovative architecture, art, and culture of honest, hardworking people. Something is not right in this all-American city. There's a quiet technological program that is slowly being rolled out that will further erode the privacy and rights of its citizens. We hit the streets to find out the real story. Here we are at Benito Juarez High School in Chicago, where behind me you can see one of these technological light poles that's been installed. This right here is built as a hybrid system and supposedly all it does is it collects energy through wind and solar to create ambient lighting in the evenings. These systems are usually introduced as a guise for collecting large metadata or for somehow helping the environment in one way or another when we know that the truth is altogether more sinister. First it'll be a system like this, next it'll be a system that's just collecting metadata like the NSA says, and then they'll go beyond that to introduce their complete and total totalitarian system right here in the heartland of America. Behind me is an example of one of the most nefarious systems that's been installed in Chicago. This is a speed camera. These cameras were installed on the streets of Chicago against a major public outcry. These cameras, in addition to the red light cameras, are just more robots using automation to slowly strip you of your right to privacy. And many conclusive studies have actually found that it makes driving even more dangerous. This pole right here is a perfect example of a totalitarian system that's put in against the will of the people to take your rights away. Now let's talk about the sculptures that are going to be tracking all the data on our cell phones as we walk by. Sculpture. It stirs the senses and as art can feed the soul. Usually we think of it as a passive object, innocuous, or is it? The Chicago Tribune reported that this program was being rolled out into the core of the city. Sensors disguised as decorative sculpture would scoop up big data on the surrounding environment and the people passing below. The sensors would be enabled to observe cell phone traffic and collect data on pedestrian behavior. These spy devices would be positioned in the highest traffic areas downtown, along the corridor of the Magnificent Mile and the surrounding loop. The proponents of the system argue that their intentions are pure, that the data gathered would be used only for better understanding the environment and nothing more. However, privacy advocates warn of potential abuses, and that setting this precedence would open the door for further digital intrusion. The most disturbing aspect of this program is that it seems it will be implemented with little oversight and almost no public consent. 
Here we are across the street from the Tribune newspaper building who published the article about the sculptures that are going to contain the sensors that are collecting your data. We're going to ask some people here in Chicago on the street what they think about that idea. So Chicago is going to be implementing a program where they're going to be putting up sensors on light poles that are disguised as sculptures that's going to be collecting your data as you walk by off of your cell phone. How do you feel about that? Well, I think that this is a complete invasion of privacy. I mean, whatever I'm doing on my phone is my business. It's not the government's business, and it most certainly isn't the people of the world's business. No, that's uh, far out. I haven't heard anything about sensors on statues. That's crazy. Let now that I think about it, it doesn't surprise me. Everything collects your data these days. Um, I think it's a really big invasion of privacy. It's kind of unfair. A lot of people have a lot of private stuff on their phones, important information that can really like just mess them up if that ever gets like into the wrong hands. I honestly think that <laughs> that is very dangerous because a lot of people don't have protection on their phones, so it can easily take the information off of your phone and be used for anything and you wouldn't even know it. I haven't heard of the program but it's very um, intrusive in my opinion because um, everyone's entitled to their own you know privacy so they can just access it that's not good. To be quite frank I think you're invading people's privacy. <laughs> in light of all the recent celebrity scandals where protected information has leaked would you trust uh, Chicago with your private information? No, not at all. I wouldn't even trust my friends with it, so I wouldn't trust, <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't trust, you know, Chicago. We don't know what they're doing, and they're not going to tell us, so. No, not at all. Celebrity or no celebrity, you know, it's just an invasion of people's privacy. We should be able to live normal lives without having to worry about a sculpture, having a camera inside of it. Uh, probably not. I'm pretty private about my data. Yeah. I wouldn't trust my own neighbor with my personal information. I mean, I can't trust Apple, who's a large corporation who's supposed to uh, secure my information, and I can't have photos of my phone without being publicized. <laughs> yes, that does go back to proper parenting, but uh, that that's no one's business but my own. Um, no, because there's so many people here that we're all just kind of numbers in a way, and it's like they can do whatever they want. No, I don't trust Chicago with a lot of things. Any way to avoid it is the best way. Talk to the Chicago board and tell them not to put, you know, things on our sculptures and our privacy is important to us. Don't do it. Just don't do it. It's kind of bad. They'd get a lot of, like, negative response to it. It's just not going to work out. Make sure you check your privacy notifications and guard your data. That's your information, so you should be uh, protecting it as much as you can. Leave us alone. Sorry. <laughs> I would say prepare to go to the next election and vote for the people who support your privacy and who aren't trying to impose on every person's life and their liberties. Thank you very much. There you have it. So as you can see, there are always people that are trying to take our freedoms and penetrate our privacy by rolling out these quiet programs where they take something as innocuous as sculpture and try to use it against us. This is Buckley Hammond signing off for Infowars.com. Well, that's it for this edition of the InfoWars Nightly News, but stay tuned because in the coming days, we'll have boots on the ground in New York City. The InfoWars crew will be documenting the remembrance of September 11, 2001. This is the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Jakari Jackson, and we'll see you again tomorrow night. You are watching the InfoWars Nightly News, which airs 7 p.m. Central at InfoWarsNews.com. Members can share their passcodes with up to 11 other people, and your support is helping us defend liberty worldwide.